day is that Gosu gamers just out tank them and they're able to survive through a lot of this burst and man fight emo rage when they start going for these pushing towers if you can't successfully take tier one or even some tier two towers uh in the early game and the enemy team is able to fight you most pugna strats start falling apart at that point in time we have to see whether or not Gosu Gamers, uh, I do prefer Wraith King as a support, so I agree with the Viper being banned out. Um, another really strong alternative would be the Razor, but he was actually the first banned by Ten Team Emo Rage. Remaining. So what would make for another good Five sustain seconds. hero remaining. for Gosu Gamers? Radiant and that is not what I expected at all. I expected them to go sustain. I was looking for some sort of initiator like a face is void unfortunately that was banned out as well some sort of tanky hero like like uh well not Br bristleback bristleback could be picked up by team emo rage so that now leaves us with answer as a support so support tri lane uh defensive tri lane i mean bristleback is an off lane and broom master in the one, one position Meanwhile, it goes to gamers with their last pick of the Drow Ranger. Too bad Toby's not casting this game. He lit out a little joy of glee. Uh, that is going to leave our Wraith King as a support. Not a big surprise. We're a Skywrath Mage. Wraith King is an amazing amount of single target at level one. Um, so it's a very successful support duo. The Drow Ranger, though, is not what I anticipated. So. This gives them a third silence. A third silence up against the Brewmaster. And this one's even better than the de de uh, Death Prophet because it is, um, I think it's a little bit faster. I think Gust is a bit faster than the animation for the AOE Silence of Death Prophet. Th this is such a long, this is such a long animation. It makes it a, a big downfall of the ability. And I think it's why it's not uh, more highly valued and why Death Prophet herself isn't picked up more often is because the silence more times than not um it, it ends up being a non-factor 30 in the game. seconds to battle it can be amazingly strong i mean an aoe six second silence is pretty insane it's just the one downside is you don't have that fast reaction right you, you don't have a way like the sky breath a single target silence to be able to instantly stop a hero when they jump on you We're actually going to be seeing dual lanes. Uh, this makes more sense. Metamancer with the Bristleback. The that battle dual lane begins. is strong enough possibly to compete with the uh, the defensive tri lane of Gosu Gamers. Actually, I'm, I'm... No. No, it's really not. Skywrath Mage and, and Wraith King are too strong. And, and then you add in the additional slow of the Drow Ranger. I don't see how they can do this. If anything, I think they should have gotten an aggro try. Um, somehow, if they wanted to try and ensure Bristleback farm, but I don't think this is actually going to do it for him. It's an early smoke I rotation, though, foul. from uh, Ghost of Gamers. They're going to see uh, the Wraith King as well as the Skywrath Mage smoke up and try and go for a kill onto the top lane, it looks like. But it's going to rely on the Wraith King to try and get close enough because Skywrath Mage should be going for Arcane Bolt level 1. It's nice to have the slow, and well, he's going to go for the slow first. We'll see whether or not they can actually get the kill. Looks like bottom lane, we do have a bit of double damage action. We know they're going to go on top lane soon. It, I just don't feel that the concussive shot is going to be enough uh, damage for them to be able to successfully get the kill. And it looks like they're not going to be going now. Slow lands on the Wraith King. They already have the slow on to uh, Captain Love, but it looks like Venomancer should be able to get back to the tier 1 tower. The Frost Arrows help out quite a bit, but it's nowhere near enough for them to get the kill. Meanwhile, it looks like Centaur was able to make his way out of that sticky situation he was in with the uh, Bane double damage. This is not a bad dual lane by any means. The Bane-Pugna uh, combination. The Bane being able to set up the sleep for you to get close enough for the Decrepa by Nether Blast. It's, it's a very dangerous combination. Outputs a lot of damage. The problem is they won't have any additional slows after that. And I think Centaur is probably tanky enough to deal with a straight damage. 
So I don't anticipate any problems for the Centaur. He plays it safe. He keeps up his regen. Um, there shouldn't be much issues in that lane for him. Middle lane, we're going to have the uh, Death Prophet going up against the Brewmaster. Now, this matchup is uh, decently favorable for the Brewmaster because he picks up a bottle, top lane. Follow Gosu gets a bit low there, but again, not enough opening for the Prospected to, to get a kill. But yeah, going back against this mid matchup, this is just a CS war. Like, Brewmaster's tanky enough, he can deal with the harassment of Crypt Swarm. Uh, and he's also a melee hero with that guaranteed critical every 10 seconds, so he's got a he's got a good chance to out CS the Death Prophet. But that is not bad for the Death Prophet anyway. She's still going to be able to pick up a lot of CS. The more important thing is just being able to successfully get a good amount of farm and um, and get into the mid game without being ganked too often. A Death Prophet is not one of those mids who needs to beat an enemy hero in order to consider it a successful lane. Captain Love, he may even have to go for a second level of Bristleback. That's how much damage, that's how scary I feel this this um, this tri-lane is. Especially at level 3, once you get the level 2 uh, Arcane Bolts, or possibly even Ancient Seal to increase the magic damage coming out from the Wraithfire Blast, as well as, obviously, the, the, the level 2 Wraithfire Blast. It's so much single-target nuking damage combined with the physical damage of the Dry Ranger and the physical slow from Frost Arrows. Not physical slow, but just constant slow, I should suppose, I should say. That it's 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 going to easily kill the Bristleback, I feel. So I, I would almost go for an extra level of his passive at this point in time. And here it comes. Great slow there from the Venomancer, but it's not going to be enough. They're going to be able to get in range with a stun. Captain Lush will fall. First blood. Follow Gansu got a little bit low. Looks like the uh, middle lane, they're going to have a clash over the rune. And unfortunately for Balabra, it's going to be in the bottom lane where regen is going to be held onto by the Bane long enough for Iceberg to fill up his bottle. So with the regen rune, uh, Brewmaster, he, he has no issues in his lane now. Like, even if you didn't get the rune control, you would still bottle crow your way to victory. But still. Oh no, Centaur, he overextended himself there. Where is the Pugna though? He is way too far away. They might not be able to get this kill because of it. Pugna just continued to sit there farming. And Centaur is actually able to hide himself into the trees and they don't want to go for the dive into the tier one tower. So it actually results in a lot of lost time for Iceberg there where the Death Prophet is able to capitalize on that and make a bit more ground on the CS lead that the Brewmaster was holding. So very critical mistake there from Limbo. I mean, I know he was very far away and he doesn't have boots, which is probably part of the issue, but that nightmare lasts so long. I think he could have been there. But he needed to start moving right away. He also needed to be able to have boots. There's no point. If you're going for arcane boots, that's fine, but there's no reason you should be waiting until the full 1500 to buy out straight arcanes. Like, there are some exceptions to that rule where you may get the mana booster first, but it's... Those are very, very situational things. And, and, and again, you would get the mana booster. You wouldn't wait until the full 1500 to go boots first. So. Enough about that, though. Looks like the uh, Bristleback, as well as the Venomance, are going to be rotating away from their lanes to try and get some room control. It makes sense. The lane is pushed very far forward, and this tri-lane is super dangerous, especially when you're far forward like this. They need the protection of their tower at this point in time, so... They, at the very least, are going to be able to ensure an easier time for the Brewmaster in the mid lane, even if they're going to be suffering an experience. Bottom lane, it looks like they're going to try and go for a kill. Slow goes on to Limbo there, and the ultimate starts coming out. Makar needs to hit a stun here. Gozu overextends himself, and Centaur's going to fall as well. Not even getting a single kill off of that one. So, big, big misplay there on the side of uh, Gozu Gamers Russia.
feeding away two kills as they attempt to teleport in. They should have just gone straight for the Pugna there. I have no idea, like, the Pugna separated himself from the Skywrath Mage by going into this alcove. The Centaur should have gone straight for him and tried to stun him up and burst down the Pugna real quickly. I know they wanted to go on the Bane because he was low, but if the Pugna offers you that opportunity, he is so squishy, man. Just go for that kill. Level 3 Double Edge brings is, is over half of the Pugna's health right now. Dyer's Another slow is going to be able to land. There goes the brain snap. Oh, he tried for the double edge there. He can go for it now and stable will fall, but Limbo can get a counter kill if Makar goes for it like this. Pugna Blast, Centaur, man. I don't even know what this guy is doing anymore. I, I, I'm sorry. It's just like he's just running into death. Probably slightly tilted. At least they're going to get a kill on Limbo here. Balaver gets woken up. Nice play there from the Skyrath Mage, but missing the Crypt Swarm, and now the turnaround! The Fiend's Grip is going to go into Balaver, and with the double damage Iceberg, easily cleaning up the kill. Top lane as well. Looks like Enemy is going to go down as his Draw Ranger was left alone due to the support rotations of GG Russia, and they didn't even get anything out of the supports. The supports rotated in, fed, and left their Draw Ranger exposed to die. Like, that is not a Draw Ranger, necessarily. I mean, you should probably play farther back and also have a TP scroll if you're going to be dealing with a double slow lane like this. But, uh, it's still, I mean, the, this game is on the supports for not making better rotations. And I, I suppose a lot of it on the Centaur for his failure to act accordingly um, when the supports came in. Brewmaster finds the Wraith King. Poor Wraith King only being level 4 is quick and easy kill for Iceberg. They can try and get a counter kill, but there's no way they could kill him. At the very least, they could force out a primal split, but it's just not with the time placed in. Iceberg is now going to run into enemy where will be able to successfully blink dodge a Frost Arrow's top lane, though. Bristleback getting some much needed farm as he takes that last hit on the tower. Has picked up his level 6. Bristleback, I feel one of his big downsides uh, as an offlaner is I feel he actually needs a significant amount of farm. Mid lane, there goes the nice two-man clap followed up by the Brewmaster Ultimate going off. That's going to be a kill on the Draw Ranger, possibly taken out from the poison. Oh, Gosu comes in. One last hit. Well done. Oh, the deny from the Skywrath Mage. I really thought that was going to be the Storm Panda claiming the kill with the Windwalk, but that's not the case. Death Drop is going to be stunned up. Iceberg comes back, but he has no slow, and now they're on the retreat. Centaur is going to go for a kill onto the Venomancer. Gets that one nice and easy. GG Russia, though. Only going to be able to claim one. Meanwhile, they're going to lose a Tier 2. This is what I'm talking about. I love Bristleback paired up with a Pugna because it is so much tower damage. Follow Gosu. He can't turn around and do any damage whatsoever. That ward is doing a good amount. Limbo's still going to fall, but it looks like Bristleback will be able to take the kill. He does have a lot of magic wand charges, but he is still going to be fall. Should still fall here as he's completely stranded out. Meanwhile, Centaur turns around, gets off the double edge. And unstable. Whoa! There, and he's going to be caught. He tries to teleport himself away. The double edge will be able to seal the deal. Double kill for Makar, who was having a tough time in his laning phase, is now going to be able to pick up a very fast quick dagger, but maybe not. Iceberg comes in with one clap, gets a double kill. Iceberg, man, make it a look easy. He's going to go for a triple. The silence is going to slow him down a little bit. Enemy's going to get closer to it. Nice. Fall goes to comes in with the saving silence as well. Iceberg will be forced away, but again, look at this. Uh, this is what I love about Bristleback. I keep on harping on this every single time I see a Bristleback. If you start, actually, he's not doing it now, but if you start spamming out Quill Spray, you do amazing amount of physical damage with your Warpath. Combine that with the Pugna Blast, it's super easy for you to take time. Another missed Crypt Swarm there from the lab. They're going to try and go in, Red King. Not level 6 is going to be saved by the center ultimate. Makar whipping on that one. Limbo going to be held in place by the silence though. And should be simply right click down. Farther down the Death Prophet ultimate is doing its work. But Captain Love trying to obtain the kill there. Overextended himself and will die. Centaur loses the life in the process of getting that kill. However, Blavor. So the poison. It's going to be close. But he should still live from this one. Brewmaster comes in. They'll finish him off. And now pops the ultimate. He's going to go for follow Gosu. Gets that one. Throws up the Drow Ranger into a Cyclone. Wait for a while, purges him down, and that is going to be a triple kill 
for our Brewmaster. At least it should be an empty pop to watch, but triple sure kill. enough, Iceberg triple kill, outdoing his last ultimate that he used up in there. And well, that wasn't even an ultimate, I suppose. Where he got the double kill, that was just a simple clap. But still, out, out, uh, Iceberg, man, he's just outdoing himself, being a part of every single team fight engagement. And this is what I'm saying, man, the, the strength of this Emo Rage lineup. I don't think GG Russia should be trying to force these fights. And if they wanted to fight, they should not have picked up a Draw Ranger. This is not the hero to go into a Brewmaster push lineup like this. It is. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Like, the silence is good versus Brew, but Brew, as a whole, is much stronger. And Stable comes in from behind, tries to go on the center, and he gets caught out by the Drive Ranger silence. Now Iceberg pops his illusions in an attempt to try and get the kill on the center, but now he's in some trouble as he's silenced up and is going to, uh, fortunately, with that haste room, get himself away. Middle lane is going to be pushed in quite heavily once again. But it is just the strong combination of pushing heroes like Pugna, Tanky heroes like Brewmaster and Bristleback. Bristleback adds in some push. And the initiation that the Brewmaster offers you. It is so much synergy by itself. But GG Russia chose willingly to pick up one of the biggest glass cannon heroes in the game up against that sort of strong initiation. Like, this Draw Ranger simply is not going to have the room to harm, nor can she operate well in teamfights up against a blinking crew. Iceberg. Looks like he didn't want the just plain Skyrath mage kill. He's going to wait for the full initiation by his team, and they're going to go straight for the death bomb. Like another hero that suffers from that kind of direct burst damage like that. Death Prophet needs room to be able to utilize that exorcism and also needs time in order to become a stronger mid game hero. And it's 13 minutes in, man, and E-Rage are just knocking on your tier twos. They're going to go uphill. By 20 minutes guaranteed at this point. There's nothing to stop them. Iceberg is already making his way towards a very fast Agonist. Limbo has his Agonist already. Captain Love has picked up a mech as well as 1600. They're going uphill before 15 minutes. They're not even waiting for the Agonist to get here. Centaur, he's picked up a Blink Dagger, and that's going to be super helpful. They need something to be able to make more room for the Death Prop and everyone else. And there goes the stun. Three man stun. Dodged by the Nightmare. Nicely played by Unstable. It's still going to be a strong initiation by the Centaur. Limbo. Oh, kept it himself with, alive with the Trap Fight and the ultimate going up again. He is sucking everybody's life away. Magmar comes back in for the double edge, but only ends up killing himself in the process. Does get the kill on the Brewmaster at the least. And the Bristleback, surprisingly enough, they both end up falling to the tower. And that should put a small damper on the push coming out from the Emo Rage team. But the tier three is about to go down. They're going to commit to it, especially with the buyback from Iceberg. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Teleport in though, Skywrath Mage. Going for the kill on Ton Stable. Unfortunately, he doesn't have his ultimate. Iceberg leaps forward there with the critical. Almost finishes off that squishy Skywrath Mage. But I think this is emo rage is going way too low at this point in time. Brew, oh, Death Prophet. They should have been lucky enough that emo rage were actually backing themselves up and they should have just killed the wards, but overextending themselves. Again. But yeah, there's there's no way they should be trying to go uphill. I, I don't think Emo Rage, they can just because they're so far ahead. I mean, look at the gold lead, over 15,000 by 15 minutes. That is an insanely Radiance high lead. 7,500 experience lead as well. But I, I don't think they should be trying to go uphill until they finish up um, at least get Radiance the Agonims, like get everybody full health, attack. finish up a couple of your items. For example, Bristleback, he had a lot of gold. Looks like he invested into a blade mail. Brewmaster is going to have an Agonim Scepter soon. Oh, Iceberg, he's going to be bursted down here as he tries to initiate and ends up just getting bursted by the Skyrath Mage ultimate. It looks like uh, Skyrath is going to go down due to the Venom ult that hits so many heroes. I'm not sure why they're trying to force this fight. Captain Love, he's doing so much back with both the Quills as well as the uh, actual Blade Mill itself. And now Brave King, well, he died earlier. He's now going to be caught out. He comes back right into the waiting hands of the uh, Bane Elemental. And GG Russia, try and force another fight they simply could not win. 
They got the kill on the Brewmaster and got all excited, thinking they can continue to fight, but... Yeah, the situation where they should have accepted attack. just the one pickoff and played a lot more passive. Because they didn't, they're going to lose their melee racks Dyer's and rage racks by 16 and a half minutes in. <laughs> what is this? Limbo. They're going to try and end attack. the game by 20, almost looks like. Limbo has already started laying down some nether blasts onto those tier 4s. No. Good, good job decrepifying the ward there. Wraith King, Jesus, look how squishy he is. Finally, the ward does go down. If GG Rush are able to, they can look for a, an initiation at this point. But Brewmaster with the boots of travel, he's joining his team. If they win a team fight right here, that is going to be them going straight for the throne. It looks like Iceberg Breaking looking for the opportunity. Doesn't take it. He could have gone for the Drow Ranger there. Now he's going to jump in. There goes Clap and GG call before GG Rush even take a fight. They know this is over. They're either going to lose the next team fight due to the Brewmaster Ultimate, or they're going to lose their throne before they can defend. And so instead, they take the surrender route. Call the GG. 17. Impressive display there from Emo Rage, but ultimately I think it falls back on just the poor drafting decisions by GG Russia.